Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood is considered one of the greatest anime ever made among new and older fans alike in the anime community. Though people might debate which version of Fullmetal is supreme, the majority overwhelmingly agree Brotherhood is a great anime no matter which side of the fandom you mesh with better. There's many factors at play that make Brotherhood such a worthwhile experience, but at the end of the day, I can boil it down to its rich world and personal driven story surrounded by likable characters. Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood takes place in the country of a mistress, following two brothers on the quest to get their bodies back. Al, the younger brother has his soul tied to a suit of armor while the older brother Ed has lost one of his legs and arms due to a failed alchemy experiment at reviving their mother. This is the main goal and drive for the series, but because Brotherhood wanted to be considered more than a one-trick pony, it does far more than just this intriguing and emotionally engaging plotline. What I adore about this series is first and foremost how much detail is given to its world design. Very early on you can tell this is a living and breathing world and it's thanks to the details in alchemy and its political history. Alchemy is given a thorough set of rules that aren't overly complex complex but not simplistic either. There are basic laws and principles that must be followed in order for alchemy to be used, at least successfully. Such as reviving the dead is considered the greatest sin and most who attempt it don't leave with their life. Ed and Al are considered lucky all things considered and even then you wouldn't look at them as the definition of luck. What they experience is the closest thing to hell imaginable. Alchemy has been used in anime before and in other mediums, but because Brotherhood is a 64 episode series it's given the time to flesh it out in a far more believable way than other series that have used it before. Supernatural movies and fight sequences aren't the same thing you've seen done a hundred times before. Alchemy is the scientific method of deconstructing and reconstructing matter, so you always have a deeper connection with what's going on at any given moment, in and out of battle. Someone controlling fire in this world isn't just random elemental magic, there's science behind it in this world. Alchemy is the root of everything in this country, from wars to just general ways of life, but it's also the root of deep corruption and sabotage that as the anime goes deeper in the episode count, you see there's more to meet the eye to the alchemy that everyone uses in a mistress. The politics in Brotherhood is some of the most memorable I have seen in anime. You learn a fair amount to the country's past, wars they fought in, cultures they destroyed, most notably the Ishfallen, which have one of the most tragic backstories in the entire anime. And once the series gets going, the quest to get Ed and Al's bodies back, though it does remain the character's main drive, it also gets pushed to the side while also remaining relevant, as the true goal and objective is brought up, to take down the corruption and evil lurking in plain sight, the military. If Brotherhood was a two-core anime, just having the focus on Ed and Al getting their bodies back it's enough to be gripping and stick with you years down the line. But because it is 64 episodes, more needed to be done, and this added addition of exploring the corruption inside their own government and the uncertainty of the homunculus, a creation that gets introduced and breaks all the rules we had come to know and expect due to their human-like nature, but seemingly immortal lifespans, the viewer always wants to dig deeper into the conspiracy with the focal characters while also rooting for the brothers and their quest to regain what they lost. The characters in Full Metal range from just fun personalities to really complex written characters. Many of the homunculus characters are nothing more than tools, and though they do have distinct personalities from one another, all representing a sin of some sort, they aren't really deep thinkers, but rather a weapon to be used by the Big Bad. The Big Bad, however, is incredibly interesting, and as the series goes on, the mystery of what's truly going on with him and his connection to Ed and Al lets the anime continue to flourish as the episodes go on. You think you have a solid understanding in the first third of the anime, but then the series makes sure to reveal things at a steady enough pace, you usually are left wondering what the hell is truly going on here, and what does this mean for the future. Ed is immediately the star of the anime, the short kid who gets hot tempered anytime someone talks about his height. But he also has one of the most respectable motivations in anime, to help his brother get his body back because he feels guilty about what happened to them and their mother, even if it means giving up his own life. Without often feeling like the older brother of the two, he never feels like a tag along, but rather just as important as his big brother. Whether it was in an action sequence or just general conversation led scenes, the way their personalities bounced off one another felt like a real brother based relationship. At times, they felt like goofy kids kids, but more often than not, felt like two kids having to play adult because this was the hand they had been dealt in life. Two kids, no parents, now tasked at tackling a near impossible quest while also working for the military at such a young age. Their story is completely tragic yet, at the same time, remains optimistic. They try to keep each other's spirits high, and when they fight or break down, they pick each other back up in the end. And one of the best part of Ed's character is how they give him the ability to use alchemy in a way only he can at the start of the series, or at least appears to be the only one capable, as he can use alchemy by just pressing his hands together in a prayer-like way, unlike everyone else who needs more preparation than just that. Though this gives him some advantage, he isn't overpowered and often has his back against a wall in fights. Though he is special in this world, special isn't just what cuts it. Experience does, and this makes him not only just a rootable and interesting character due to his family-driven story and unique attributes with alchemy, he's also the farthest thing from overpowered, and the same goes for Al as the series goes on. So his action sequences are actually pretty engaging as you never know if he'll win or lose a battle, whereas most series 
like this will let the main character always win. Thankfully, Full Metal didn't go that route. Characters like Winry, Ed and Al's childhood friend, and now Ed's personal mechanic, is the perfect example of making the female childhood friend more than just a potential romantic interest. You know it will eventually head in that direction, sure, but she is a strong-willed character who has her moments as a weakness, but is also important for the anime overall. She is the main reason Ed can continue to fight because of her skills with Automail. But most importantly, she is the anchor for the two brothers. She isn't a cheerleader, but rather one that's always there when it counts. And when she messes up, they are there for her as well. She always feels like a person rather than a template romantic interest. You never feel bored when she's on screen, she fits with the brothers so well, and often has relevancy to the scenes at hand. And when she isn't necessarily needed, she remains important just due to the fact she's a friend with a connection to Ed and Al. So it makes sense for her to always look out for them. Mustang is one of the most badass characters who might seem a little stuck up at first. He does quickly become one of the most interesting and rootable characters in the entire series. Around the halfway point, you understand his backstory and drive, and he feels like the kind of guy you would want leading the country as he isn't afraid about sacrificing himself for the greater good, unlike most political leaders in this anime. Not to mention his alchemy is just awesome to look at, and also quite hilarious depending on the scene, especially when it's raining or wet outside, as then he is basically useless and gets upset like Ed does when someone talks about his height. You can take a look at Armstrong, Hawkeye, Bradley, Yao Ling, there is a lot of great characters in this anime. The series knows how to present its characters, good and bad ones alike, so you'll always have a handful of standout ones no matter your taste and character design. Full Metal makes sure the viewer has a solid understanding of the fundamentals of its world and characters right off the bat, and then quickly but a steady and slow enough pace introduces more and more mystery and mechanics from characters to world design that makes Full Metal one of the most memorable anime experiences ever made. Every 10 episodes or so, the bar gets raised, characters become more interesting, the stakes get higher, and the emotional baggage gets heavier. You might take a look at this guy as a mindless killer for a while, and though he is a murderer, that's not all he is, and even Scar becomes an interesting character to follow, and at times even rootable. Things aren't always what they appear to be in any given episode. Who characters can trust? Does this country deserve to be saved? You never truly know what to expect in any given arc of brotherhood. The world continues to get fleshed out in interesting ways, while the quest to get the brothers' bodies back remains to be emotionally gripping the entire way through. This anime is as long as it needed to be. The story is memorable, the mystical world elements are given scientific reasons behind them so they never feel the same as past anime, while multiple story elements stack together to build engaging character and story arcs. The only real gripe I could point out is when it comes to the writing in the intro episodes, they are a little fast paced, mainly due to the staff wanting to get to the content they didn't get to adapt in the first series before it went anime original, but even with faster pace it does the job well enough, even if you've never watched the original Full Metal anime, so you're not really missing out enough that it actually weakens this experience. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is damn fine to look at for its 64 episode. I want this to be known, I think Brotherhood is one of the best looking anime that ran past the traditional 2 core episode count, and one of Studio Bone's best looking anime ever. 64 episodes are where you would expect major dips, it's not totally consistent every single frame mind you, there are wider shots and even some more medium based shots that are iffy, but this series remains fairly polished up to its last episode. One of the biggest strengths to the series is its directing, anime is known for standing still and having minimal movement a fair amount. Sure you have mouth flaps that will move, but often often you'll just see stagnant shots of characters standing still. Full Metal does do this, but the brilliance is how often it cuts away and changes the camera's perspective. When characters are standing around talking, rarely does it let the viewer focus on one perspective for too long. It makes sure to play around with the scenery by constantly giving new ways to view the scene at hand, allowing for the immersion of movement despite characters not moving around all that much. And when we do focus on one shot for a longer period of time, the overall visuals were usually highly polished, with smooth animation backing them. With the overall action sequences looking fluid and breathtaking, more often than not. The way the ground would shatter or a Mustang would burn someone alive, it didn't look like traditional animation for action anime, but rather, it was a bit more original with creativity behind it. Almost like the animators breaking away from traditional styles and having a bit more fun. Something that helps the series remain beautiful to look at is how it portrays its comedy scenes. Full Metal is one of the leading examples on how to pull the viewer away from the scene at hand, let it be goofy, and switch back to being serious without it feeling that off-putting. Sometimes it does in the early stages of the anime, but because of the unique art style ranging from simplistic design to abstract and wild, the series plays around with the comedy style often enough to keep it fresh and often humorous to look at. This consistent comedic style that is present pretty often lets the anime get away with more sloppy shots than your average anime. When things are less refined, you subconsciously remember the comedic scenes, and though they will feel out of place, at the same time you've come to expect certain scenes to look different than the standard ones, so for me personally, because they weren't that frequent when there were dips, I almost never cared because it almost blended in with the comedy scene styles, so they kind of felt right at home even though they weren't supposed to. The designs are all pretty memorable as well, and even years later you'll probably remember a lot of the characters looks, such as the man, the myth, the legend, Armstrong, whether you want to or not he stays in your mind, and his overall design matched that personality so damn well. Ed's design really is memorable for me, and though he might just look like a short kid with long 
long blonde hair, his design doesn't feel familiar to other anime characters out there, and as the characters explore Mistress the way different towns looked, it gave a sense of culture and life that helped sell this country as something truly alive. When it comes to how to watch Brotherhood, I always go with the English dub personally. I've watched the anime once in Japanese and it is great, but the English dub is the best example that I can give of how to do an English dub well. None of the characters, well past maybe some of the kid characters, feel fake. One of my biggest issues with many English dubs is it sounds like people making overly fake anime based voices, whereas in Japan they feel a lot more natural. In Full Metal it feels like people talking and acting, not trying to be overly anime or imitating Japan. English dubs when they succeed do so because they feel natural and not trying to imitate Japanese voices. Ed's voice is pleasant to listen to and fluctuates in the proper way from general conversations to the overall hyper and energetic comedy scenes or the more emotionally gripping ones where you can hear trembling in his voice. Mustang is my second pick for voice acting in the English dub due to how well Travis Willingham nailed that commander voice, but gave him such a great down-to-earth style as well. The way Mustang could appear frightening in one scene and just a goofball in the next without it feeling forced was wonderful. Maybe the best way to sell the dub though is with King Bradley's English voice actor who has one of the most imitating voices I have ever heard in anime. His character design sells him as a don't mess with me kind of guy, but his English voice actor is what makes him so imitating. With the overall sound direction being pretty on point, the best example I can give is Al. The guy is a walking suit of armor and more often than not in the background not ever overpowering the dialogue or music, you hear metal clanking around when he moved. This is the attention to detail that helps sell immersion. When a suit of armor is constantly sounding like a suit of armor, you know the overall sound direction will be solid overall, which often it is, as objects usually have a sound behind them. These sounds behind Al's movements, they aren't always present, but rather when Al is in the focus of the scene, in the background you will hear the armor move around with his voice having this tin-like effect layered on top, making it sound like his voice is actually coming through a suit of armor. Many series refuse to have this close of attention to detail, but you truly believe Al is a soul stuck to a suit of armor because his voice was carefully layered with proper effects mixed in with great movement sound design matching his actual movements. With the plethora of openings and endings that are all worth listening to in full even in a binge, even many of the backing tracks are pretty phenomenal in their own right with how many elevate the scenes at hand. Honestly, this series is just great in every department, okay? Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is one of those shows you can talk about for hours and even then you'll miss something worth discussing. Each person will latch onto something different that sold them on it. For me, it comes down to Ed and Al's unique relationship and their incredibly personal and emotionally gripping story. A world that doesn't feel shallow and one-dimensional, but rather complex, rooted with corruption so deep you don't truly know if it's actually fixable, and world mechanics like alchemy that just set itself apart from other mystical-based series. When characters die, it usually had an emotional weight behind it, and most characters feel real, not just there to fill a scene. The few that were just that weren't that relevant anyhow, and those that were, were given enough of a personality and motivation to feel believable more often than not. Now, I could nitpick, some of the comedy makes me roll my eyes, some scenes lose its polished touch and feel off-putting, though I still say many feel right at home as they kind of mirror the comedy direction it goes for, for its art when it does dip in quality, and not every episode will blow you away, but as a whole, these are such non-issues for myself that I never really focus on them unless I'm really trying to find faults for the series. I always leave this show completely impressed and it delivers everything that I would want out of a series running over 60 episodes. A believable world, great characters, and emotionally gripping story that finds a way to one-up itself fairly often. So of course it gets my ultimate seal of approval, it's a masterpiece. For recommendations, if you want to watch something similar, I'll throw down two. First of which is the 2011 version of Hunter x Hunter. This is a hell of a long series running over 100 episodes that, like Full Metal, has a personal-led story about a kid trying to find his father, but along the way the adventure grows far past that. The main mechanic Nen is fascinating and most of the characters and story arcs will grip you. Best of all, I personally think it ends. The goal is met despite some arguing it needs more episodes, but for me the series concluded as the main objective was achieved. And secondly, Attack on Titan. Now that Season 3 is out, I can highlight why the world of Attack on Titan is so great. If you enjoyed the politics of Full Metal, you'll love Attack on Titan. Many probably watched the first and second seasons, but if you thought it was just Titan killing show, jump on to Season 3. You'll see past arcs had much more going on than you first gave credit to. Attack on Titan first and foremost is a political story, and how the series explores its corruption and mystery from its government is pretty fantastic. But that's all for this video. Let me know your thoughts on Brotherhood down in that comment section below. Remember to leave a like if you did enjoy the video and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content from little old me in the future. Now if you want to be the MVP, head on over to my Patreon where you can directly support the channel and receive some pretty cool perks as well if you so wish. But until next time everyone, please take care and have a good one.